I know we have a lot of fun here at uh, the Gauntlet Hangouts, but I just want to take a moment to address something that sometimes we don't get to when we're talking about online gaming, talking about one of the absolute benefits of it, really, that, that we really need to consider is the fact that here I can run this online game having eaten a quarter loaf of homemade garlic bread and no one is, no one is going to be smelling it because I, I reek of garlic from every pore of my body right now. I'm just telling you that. Hello and welcome to the Gauntlet Hangouts. My name is Lowell and tonight we're playing The Veil. Sort of. We're playing Veil, which is a PBTA cyberpunk game, but uh, we have reskinned it for fantasy. And uh, last time we did a session zero, and uh, then we kind of rolled our characters uh, into a situation that, well, PBTA is one of those games where where bad moves roll into bad moves, roll into bad moves. And, and things went from, oh, maybe this isn't so good, to, oh my God, uh, here come the persecutors. Uh, and that's actually where we're kind of taking up tonight. So I'm going to frame up the scene as it was. So uh, we have the snake pit, this uh, the, the the red snake pit that uh, was the bar that our group was in, uh, meeting to try and get some payoff. Uh, they they saw some magic. They saw some people get lured outside. When they went to investigate, they saw that essentially two bards, one a drummer. Um, and one a fiddler uh, were controlling uh, locals and essentially using them uh, uh, as instruments of a brawl. Uh, two of our, our party, uh, and I say party loosely, it's two of our, our group uh, uh, decided to head out the back door um, and then thought a little bit better of it. Um, while the other two uh, went to try and deal with the situation and then thought a little bit better of it. Um, especially once they were flung back um, and uh, uh, by the, the little drummer boy uh, who, who sent them uh, uh, tottering across the, the snow-covered street. Uh, our uh, familiar Zelda transformed successfully uh, into her, her beast form uh, and went around and was kind of coming around the, the back back way. And she's actually the person we're going to be starting with tonight um, because she was sort of the, the, la the furthest back in the turn order. Um, uh, and right now, uh, Feistus uh, and Samlin are kind of on the street, not in great shape. Uh, Samlin's okay. Uh, her, her armor uh, ate most of that. Um, Feistus, not so much. Uh, uh, really got knocked about. But then the other thing is that Garzula uh, went to kind of sidle on through a narrow way to get around to the front. Um, and in the course of that, uh, heard the shimmering sounds that signal to him the coming of the persecutors um, and realized that he's kind of jammed uh, in between these buildings and he can see the silvery form of the persecutor uh, up above, coming down. So that's where Garzula is. Zelda, you will hit that corner, cat-like grace, even with the ice and the snow here. They remember that the, there's, there's lots of snow in the air. Again, this is a neighborhood that gets dumped with the weather control magics. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you will make out this drummer, um, you will see this this bloody gangs of New York style brawl going out there uh, in the street, um, and uh, Samlin kind of going over to to help get uh, Feistus up, who does not look in great shape. Okay. So tell me, Zelda, given how bad this looks, do you wish to run away, or do you have something you want to do? I have something I want to do. I had, we had, I gave the opportunity for my friends to get out of this without being hurt, but they, some of them did not choose to take it. And now coming around and seeing them there and my, I, I certainly think of them as my friends and yeah. I owe them. Um, and so I'm pissed off that, that they've hurt my friends, that this guy's hurt my friends. So I am going to charge forward and my, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to slam into the guy's drums, 
knocking them away as the Rasputin Zelda combo turns to face and lets out a terrifying roar of my giant panther and hopefully scare this guy into uh, some sense. So I think the first thing you're trying to do is, is neutralize. Yes. Uh, use force to try to neutralize a threat, take control of the situation. Um, so what are you running, rolling with there? What is your mood? What is your state? I think, it, I think I'm mad. Okay. I mean, I, I'm peeved that the, the my friends are hurt. So, so. go ahead and mark uh, a checkbox on mad and roll with that. All right. And so I have one in that. And on oh, dice, be kind. That's a nine. That is a nine. So uh, on a nine, when we, we look at this. Oh, Lowell. Yes. Uh, since I still had hold from last time from my analyze, and part of it was finding out where the drummer was, that was one of my questions I had answered, mm -hmm. do I get to use that plus one forward from it? Yes, I think that's fair. You remembered it, so yeah. Then I will take a, a 10 then. So on a 10 plus, you generate uh, three hold from the neutralized picks and take no harm in the doing. Let's see here. I am going to, uh, let's see. I'm going to take away an advantage. Okay, so two of your hold, essentially you want to rip those drums away from him. And mm -hmm. what do you want to do with the other? And I suppose that's going to be force a change of location. I'm tr oh, no, no, it's going to be the impressed to make frightened. That's okay, it. absolutely. Um, uh, so tell me what that looks like. You don't actually hurt him, but you, you, you get the drums and, and you freak him out. So what is, what do we see on, on screen here? I think that there is this leap of this massive black cat and just that, I mean, he's huge. The body slamming into, is it like Tom, Tom type drums or? Yeah. He's got two entire? sort of, well, more like a marching drum, like snares. Oh, Okay. Um, so my body is it slams into them, they go flying with the kind of rattle, rattle, rattle as they're going down onto the, the ice. But I hit them and my claws dig straight into that ice. So there's even a little bit of that screech of the ice as this huge cat head, probably about level with his own face, just opens up and rawr, saliva dropping the huge teeth right there in his face. Drums hit the ground uh, with with a, a clash and a clatter. Uh, he goes, you know, s sliding across the ice, and he looks up. Even as the people that he had control of, like that, clearly breaks the spell. However, it doesn't break the spell on the other people, who will begin to stabby stab stab them. Um, but yeah, this this bard hits, slides, and is looking up like that is not what he expected to happen. And he's looking the other way, like he's trying to figure out who you are. Um, uh, like, are you the other guy's backup or something? Um, and he, he looks freaked. Uh, tell me what uh, you are doing when you see that happen, Samlin. This is super exciting. <laughs> um, so I think... Well, I'm going to try to get my, my feet behind under me, and I'm going to take a run at that other musician. Okay, so you want to, to run and try and uh, uh, you use force on this other guy? Yes, force okay. or neutralize or whatever it is. That is exactly what it is, neutralize. So what is your mood, Sam? I think she's kind of excited. She feels somewhat bad just for a second that Feistus has had a bad day. But still, there's so many delightful things to consider. And so she is going to race towards the next most delightful thing that she so would that, like to stab. Is that joy or is that power? I think it's joy okay. more than anything else. I think she's just like, oh, let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's have you mark joy. Okay, I will. As soon as I guess. And then roll. Okay. Here goes joy. And then that gives me, oh, that's a plus one. All right. 
Sorry, I lost my roller. I will get it back. Keeps bringing up the Google Docs. Oh, it's over there. Got it. I'm Got on it. it. Yes, I'm re-rolling my dice. The green ones that betrayed me so many times before. And they did whoa, it this time. They did twelve. Five. So that's a twelve. Yes. Uh, so you get three hold. All right. I'm going to use them with prejudice. Okay. Um, so well, you've got three hold. You don't take any harm, and you've got three hold. Okay. So um, essentially, I think I'm going to. <laughs> um, I saw I saw what the cat did and I am going to do the same thing but in my own inimical Samlin way so the other one is playing what sort of um, fiddle fiddle oh my gosh like an evil version of Lindsay Sterling really yeah um, yeah, I think that I am going to take a running jump, land on his shoulders, wrap my legs around his his head, you know, from behind, grab his fiddle up and sort of throw us back onto the ground, just laughing hysterically the entire time. So two hold of your three yeah. to take away the advantage. Yes, and um, I think uh, force the change of location. Okay, so essentially you would have put him face first into the pavement. Exactly. Like, well, me too. But... Far, but but you want to get him knocked down. Exactly. That seems fair. So yeah, you will do that leap up. You come out of the blizzard, and then boom, grabbed, wrestling lock, and he drops to the ground, and we hear the crumple, uh, and the boom, 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 of the strings break. Now, Feistus, you have. There's that sudden bad feeling. Even as you see this happen, like like you're two two people you know take out these bards, but like the hackles on on the back of your your neck kind of go up just a just a little. Um, uh, and you will recognize that feeling from the time that you saved Garzula from the persecutors before. Oh, so the persecutors are back. Um, and and you turn around and you can see down this very narrow slide through alley, Garzula scooting along and this spectral force coming down at him. Um, do they have an eye on Garzula or... Uh... They are certainly coming for him. Okay. Um, I want to do some kind of magic to uh, try and yeah, probably something like like just throw fire at them to to get them to divert their attention to look, to look away from him, or uh, uh, how about like uh create a fog over Garzula between him and them. Okay. Um, so uh, do you think that's uh, uh, you helping Garzula? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, does that seem like the, the right way to handle that? I guess so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm wondering whether, whether you think it's uh, uh, or do you want to uh, do a divert roll? Um, how, how would you like to, to, to roll that out? I, I was thinking the divert role, okay. but if you think well, help, let's, go, maybe let's go with that. There, there are a couple ways to read it, so I wanted to make sure what you wanted to be doing. All right. Let's have you roll divert. What is your state? Oh, hmm. Uh, let's see. I've had to deal with these guys before, and I'm guessing they're pretty hardy customers. So, uh, mm, Uh, figure probably fear. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. uh, six. Yeah. So the good news is I get an XP. You get an XP. 
The bad news is when you do that, like you, your magic starts to summon up that fog and that spectral thing, that force that's coming down like a, a, like a, a sheet of sort of uh, silvering things splits in two and part of it travels down your spell over to where you are and pins you to the ground, like knocks you down and pins you. <laughs> and I see it kind of do this thing where it's, it's starts like drawing in essence from you. Like Dementor style. Dementor style. Garzula. What are you doing? I see. Uh, when last one, I think I was slowly, you know, inching my way through that little hot, tiny, tiny alleyway mm -hmm. um, to try and get back over to where everybody else was. And I saw the persecutor form above me. And then I saw, I just saw something like draw off part of it. Yeah. You can see uh, your friend Feistus again, try to intercede begins to cast and the the persecutor just runs down the lines of power over to him knocks him down Oof. okay um mm. they learn from their last mistake okay so that means they've tried to, they're going to try and focus on that uh yeah you know you might i mean maybe if they if they really want to get get him out of the way. Maybe you could use that as distraction and, and escape. Yeah, but uh, but I owe him for the last time, so. True. Uh, hmm. I think uh, I think what, uh, what I want to try and do is uh, hmm. there's still a little bit of it uh, over near me, right? It's yeah, there's there's half of it that is is up near you, coming coming towards you. Okay. Um, I want to try and um, I want to try and and uh, I think I want to try and uh, and distract it uh, by whispering um, by whispering a name to it. These things are defined by their lack of a name, but what I'm doing is I'm whispering like an, an offer of a name to just half of it and maybe trying to basically cause it to have some sort of identity break. And distract right. it that, 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 that definitely seems like a, a good way to divert. So I want to try and do that. Um, let's what see. What is I, your mood? Oh, um, I think um, I think this uh, for him. This is an offer of power because that's what his main magic focuses on is an offer of naming. Okay, true names. So uh, he's going to go with power. And let's see how that. Let's uh, see how that will work. I'm using the two yellow dice over on the right hand side of the roller. Okay, and that is going to go horribly. Um, that is a, a total of five. That is a total of five. So you kind of start to, to speak uh, this. And as soon as you say like the first syllable of it, it like knows what's coming and it is down and it runs down. Uh, uh, into your throat and be kind of pulls the words out of your windpipe. Um, you're going to spike one of your stats. Okay. What stat do you think 
is going to spike here, which means you fill in all of the boxes on one of your stats. I would think it's. Uh, I would think it's probably going to. Uh, it's probably going to spike fear. Okay. Then click. Yeah. So clear power. Spike up to to uh, fear, which means that uh, you're going to be rolling with fear with a plus one. Anything else with a minus two until you can can clear that. The good news is you get to mark XP. Yep. So I am gagging on indescribable alien stuff. Yep. And it's it's pulling the very breath you use to speak out of you to get all the little words, all the little syllables out of you. Zelda, you this bard, um, you you were like, okay, now I'm going to maybe have a conversation, or I'm going to threaten this bard a little bit more. And out of the corner of your cat-like eye, um, you will see this dementor like spectral thing land and knock Feistus down. Okay. Now if you go deal with that, this bard's gonna gonna hightail it out of here. I think I can live with him hightailing. In fact, I think out of my this giant cat face uh he'll hear if you're here when I come back there's going to be many, many of you left when I leave. You see the bard like try to parse the sentence and then then run. <laughs> As I'm going to leap over claws extended to try and rip whatever that is off of my friend. All right. Um, so uh, it's manifested a little more physically in the world. So that is to your advantage. Otherwise, you might not be able to affect it. Mm -hmm. But right now you have that opportunity. Uh, is that neutralize? I suppose it is. Okay. I think I'm still bad, so I'll mark that. Oh, please do. And roll. Oh, that's a 12. That is a 12. Look at you with all the high rolls this evening. Um, so what do you want to do with this neutralize? All right, back over to neutralize. Um, if you want to get it off of him, that's forcing a change of location. Yeah, I think I want to inflict harm, and I want to uh, do the change location. And I will let you choose so that I can also dismay or frighten it. Okay, so certainly, certainly it... You will knock it back. It will will sail, hit, kind of royal, and regroup in the middle of these these people who are kind of milling around and 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 freaking out. Um, and uh, it, you see it adjust itself like it's rethinking its strategy here. Um, Hopefully, uh, but I it, this damage. Yeah, it's it. There's there are some marks on it like the claw marks that that it looks down and like like it expects those to like heal uh, and they don't right away and uh that that's probably the thing that frightens it the most um so let's come back then to samlin probably hear the scream of garzula that gets choked off um uh and you see uh zelda knock this thing off of Phaestus. oh and you've got this guy pinned. <laughs> uh, great. Um, well, I got to get up first. And I think I'm just going to toss him into the big group of the people that he was controlling and going, this is the bastard that did this. And uh, then I will lope over to see what's going on with Garzula. Uh, so you uh, just kind of push him. Uh, you know, he's, he's probably going to get away. I want but to spin but, him yeah. around, yeah. Um, he's probably going to get away, but but you get him out, and you will see Garzula uh, with this spectral form, like the one that uh, Zelda just knocked about, uh, uh, draining him somehow. And, of that course, he's, he's you see the side of him. He's in profile because he's in that little sort of narrow slide-through alley. 
Okay. Uh, well, can I uh, sort of think I'll pull my uh, uh, chain out, tie it in a noose, and uh, essentially I'm going to go and see if I can uh, get it wrapped around this dementor or whatever it is, this prosecutor, persecutor? Persecutor. Um, yeah, get it around it and essentially put a real drag on it. Essentially, it does, it's a magical stasis chain. So it should inhibit its ability to fight me. All right. Uh, so I think that will certainly give you the fiction um, uh, to, to, to neutralize it. Okay. Um, uh, uh, or, or you could even do a divert in the sense of, of pulling it away. Sure. Now, what do I know about these things? I mean, it's another kind of weird. Nah, you have, I, I, well, that would be an analyze. Oh, well, then forget that. I'm not thinking too hard. Um, so I'll make a roll. I'll probably use power this time just okay. because I'm using my stuff. All right. Um, let's see how this goes. So that gives me a nine. That gives you a nine. Um, and this is your major magic item, right? Yep. Uh, so let's say that this is the first time you've used it in the scene. So we'll give you a plus one for that. Oh, thank you. That's I appreciate that. That, that sounds very generous. Tip. I know that it's going to go terrible after that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. That's my plan. I want to get your <laughs> ego inflated on it. Um, exactly. uh, so that means you have to pick three. Mm, let's see here. Uh, I think, and I'm doing divert, right? Uh, you said uh, neutralize. Oh, neutralize. Neutralize is awesome too. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to force a change of location out of Garzula. Okay. Um, and I think that I am going to uh, impress, dismay, or frighten my opponent. Um, and I think I'm going to suffer little harm in it. You don't even need to pick that. Because, oh, I don't. Uh, a ten plus, you get that for free. Um, so well, then I'll inflict harm. So you will whip this thing out where it will slam down. What does your chain look like? Describe to me what what we see. Uh, it is essentially uh, it's a iron chain with small links. They're each teardrop shaped and then uh, sort of wrapped inside of each other. Um, it's a very smooth chain, very flat. Um, and it's iron, so it should be very base, but it stays, it always stays clean and new and bright and doesn't tarnish. Um, it should snap, it just never seems to. Um, and what it does is, is, and so think of it as it's probably like if you took a set of paper clips all together in that sort of that width and that thickness, um, but not that shape because that's not cool. And right. um, <laughs> And, and uh, essentially, uh, yeah, it, it has magical stasis. So whatever is wrapped in it doesn't have uh, its full magical powers. Um, it can be held. So, I think you will, will whip this thing out into the street and it will kind of land next to the other one. Both of them now frightened. Both of them bothered. Like, like they thought that they could sense that Garzula was vulnerable but then suddenly everything changed. Um, and uh, uh, you will see uh, the, the, them kind of you know, stand to attention and then they're just not there because they have no identity and they're gone. Garzula, what does it feel like when this thing gets yanked out of your, your throat? Well, number one, I think it's uh, I think it's a little painful because um, it hit a, it. Hit, it's good to get it out, but like wrenching out is basically like pulling a knife out of a out of a out of a wound. I mean, it, that's that's kind of what it felt like, and it had a little bit of hold of his essence. Um, so he's like uh, he's sputtering and gasping and you know choking a little bit. Maybe uh, he he uh, coughs and spits out a little blood um, as he sort of staggers out of that little alleyway. Finally. <laughs> Um, and uh, you you will, will come over. Uh, you hear the sound. Uh, 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 battling bards have taken off. 
people are out in the street, you know, they're, they're calling for physicers. Um, they're trying to patch each other up. Um, it's mostly flesh wounds, but some of them took some, some deep hits. Um, and you see people leaning out of windows, uh, uh, up in the neighborhood, kind of like, uh, trying to, to see what's going on here in the snow. Um, and the four of you can regroup. Have we seen our patron yet? No. Where is this goofball? I think it looks like he stood you up. Hey, Lol. Uh, yeah. When should I be rolling for my my triggers? Is after a gift from your curse manifests? Oh, um, we'll do uh, we'll we'll do that at the. We're gonna do XP, and then we'll kind of do any start a session move things. We'll we'll resolve that. Okay. Garzula sort of coughs out a, a, a choked thank you to, uh, to Samlin after he uh, gets his breath back. Um, and I think Samlin's like, that was pretty cool. I mean, are you okay? Mostly. Okay. Oh, hey. Um, and she'll sort of reach down and make a snowball with the blood snow. You know? She go, you really shouldn't let like other people get a hold of this. She'll hand it to you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I'm standing kind of over Feistus and, uh, are you all right? Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? E extremely. <laughs> Here, let me help you up, and I think I'll probably uh, back out and separate and uh, start lifting you up and helping you along. Well, thank you. Got the wind knocked out of me several times, and uh, oh, the overall, just, that was awful. Everything I did was just awful. <laughs> I wish you get you patched up. Uh, yeah, so uh, I will will uh, assume that uh, uh, Feistus. Um, to clear that severe is going to cost a gold piece. Ouch. Uh, if you want to do it quickly, or you can 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 leave it to heal naturally over the course of a couple days. I will spend the gold and complain about the expense of physicers these days. Okay, uh, your light <laughs> will clear it will clear itself in, uh, within a day. Um. Let's do XP, just so we have that. Uh, kind of roll forward, and then we'll do anybody who has start a session moves. We'll take a look and do those. Um, and then we'll roll into sometime later after our prologue. So uh, I look at XP. You guys marked XP at a miss. Um, so, Sherry, I'm going to walk you through these questions. Sherry, did you, in the prologue, encounter a situation which forced you to challenge or question your belief? You're muted. Take a drink. Dang it. Um, well, that's a good question. I think that everything is supposed to be about reputation and not about skill. But my lack of skill early on put me back a little. Hmm. I don't know. Does that count? You tell me. I, I will say that it hasn't occurred to her yet. Okay. That. Uh, uh, I don't think you face danger because of your trouble yet. Oh, no, not yet. Ouch. Uh, did, uh, but you didn't make any gold. I, well, we tried. We were there tried. to collect. Uh, did you create a new debt, call in a debt to someone else, or pay a debt you owe? No, the debt did not come into decisions or conversation. Did you learn something new about the city? Yes. What What is the thing you learned about the city in this, this prologue? It has ice, and ice is slippery. Okay, I'll give you that. So that's one point for you. All right. Uh, which should take you, I believe, to five, which will yeah. allow you an advance. Woot, woot. Uh, and then uh, let's uh, come to Garzula. Uh, Garzula, we checked this. Um, uh, the XP questions. Um, did you encounter something that forced you to challenge or question your belief? 
I don't think so. My belief uh, is that uh, I was taught that knowledge is the greatest good, but now I know simple knowledge is not enough. And I think that was just clubbed home again by, you know, him, uh, him kind of being, uh, having to be rescued from the persecutors again by his friends because he, he, uh, he tried something that he thought he knew how to do and it backfired. <laughs> uh, you did face danger because of your trouble. You've got two troubles, the one you picked plus also the persecutors. So you get an XP for that. Okay. Did you create a new debt, call in a debt or pay off a debt? I don't think I did any of those things. Okay. Did you learn something significant and new about the city? Uh, I think so. There are battling bards. Uh, I did not know that. <laughs> Absolutely. They're dangerous. Uh, uh, wild rogue bards. Uh, so that's a point for that. Uh, Feistus, uh, did you encounter a situation that forced you to challenge or question your belief? Um, I... Uh changed my belief because we were kind of iffy on it last time sure, sure. to uh, you can only get ahead through power people who are too friendly will get dragged down mm -hmm. um, so I would say yes probably okay yeah if you believe I so. had to rely on other people because I was completely ineffective <laughs> so we'll uh, mark an XP for that um, I don't think you face danger because you're trouble correctly um, didn't make any gold uh, anything with debts? Um, I was trying to uh, protect Garzula, but that didn't work out so well, so I'm going to say no. Okay. Did you learn something significant and new about the city? Um, I think I think the Battle Bards is definitely uh, uh, <laughs> something significant. Absolutely. Give you a point for that. And then Zelda. Uh, did you hit something that forced you to challenge a belief? I don't think so. This was still just about being good and lucky. Yep. Um, I don't think you faced danger because of your trouble. No. Um, I, I don't think we did anything with the debts. Um, I'm curious, uh, is it, am I cashing them out or anything uh, in that, I mean, I was planning to run. The reason I went back is because these two are not, you know, they're friends and have helped me out. Is that calling on my debts for that? Well, who, who did you owe any of them a debt? I owe everybody a debt. Okay. Well, do you think there's one of them that you helped particularly that do you think you cleared that debt? I don't know. Vices, do you feel like what I was doing might have cleared the debt between us? See what is the the debt you have on I me? It's off of your sheet. Um, Zelda had the chance to get info or edge on the one who cursed me, but passed it on to line their own pockets. Mm, that may not have been enough to clear that debt. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. It's not mm. not related enough. Okay. To... Um, right. And did you learn something new about the the city? I hate to echo everybody, but I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> I think uh, musical number ballet dancing off of there is pretty freaking awesome. Absolutely. There is a another point for you. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go around and see if anybody has started session moves. And then we'll figure out what everybody's up to. Um, and in this case, we're going to kind of do once arounds see what everybody's doing um and uh a little bit like urban shadows a little bit like veil vale. um people will will fall in each other's paths as we need to but we'll we'll start out with with all of you uh in your day to day um sam lynn do you have any starter session moves i do not i am devoid of those sorts of things so far as i know all right fair enough garzula do you have any starter session moves Uh, Feistus, uh, I believe that you have a start of session move, which we will do the spiral downward. Yes. Um, buh, 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 buh. Where is it at? The spiral downward. You hold yourself together for now. Um, talk to the MC about your timeline. Your curse begins at plus one. At session start or end, pick one or both. Roll plus the curse. We'll do it to start. Plus. Start. 
Okay. On a 10 plus, your curse deepens. Increase your curse by plus one. Manifest another sign. On a 7 through 9, choose just choose a sign to manifest. On a miss, right. the curse remains the same. So this is one of those fun roll low ones. So, of course, I will roll very high on this one. Um, and I only have the one curse at the moment. So... Six, nine, ten. Yeah. Ten. Uh, so first of all, your curse becomes a two. Uh, and uh, then uh, you get a new sign for your curse. Um, I want some kind of physical deformity. So I was thinking kind of uh, like Thoth was the Egyptian god of knowledge, so mm -hmm. maybe go with that, and he starts uh, sprouting feathers all along his head and shoulders and down his arms. And not like not like pretty feathers. No. Like these are starting that kind of already come in sort of pigeon pigeon will to the uh, at least here to start. Maybe eventually they'll they'll you'll get some beautiful plumage. But right now, uh, it's pretty horrible. Um uh, and the feathers get everywhere, you know, uh, uh, in your food, in the books that you're eating, those kinds of things, you know. Um, all right. Uh, so that's what we know that what's going on with that. Oh, and you asked about the uh, the when the, the gift manifests that you have to worry about the, the trigger. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, uh, that will happen is you've got two things. One is the when you die. That's mm -hmm. one of your gifts. The other is. Uh, you channel magic naturally, you take no casting drawbacks, which means in a sitch where you would otherwise, like on a seven to nine, when you cast, might have to go to a drawback. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it won't uh, if you don't want it to, uh, but then you'll have to deal with the, the, the problems from, from the trigger. Oh, okay. Okay? Yep. I have one. Zelda, yes, you do. Hungry, hungry hippo. Indeed. Uh, I have the thy will be done. So I start with one hunger and then I roll and add hunger. And uh, that's another one I think that I'm better off if I roll poorly, but we'll it see. It is very true. Well, I rolled a seven. Well, roll I rolled seven. a six. Okay. But it's a seven. Uh, so on a seven to nine, uh, I get one hold, and uh, during the session, I can spend that to uh, uh, have the familiar name something at once, have it object to a course of action. Those are the two choices, um, and there are some consequences if you don't give it what you want or you don't listen to what it says. Yes. Oh, and I actually suppose I needed to, now that I see reading that, that actually took my hunger up before I rolled, didn't it? B -b 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 yes, but that's okay. Um, I mean, I still it, it, have the same role, but yeah, yeah, because I th and I and I think your, I think your hunger starts at zero. Starts at one. Does it start at one? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is so much worse. Yes. Yeah, okay. I was looking at ways to get rid of hunger, and it ain't super easy. No, no, it isn't, is it? <laughs> um, uh, essentially, when it it you have to do what it says. I can do what it says. There's a few other things along the way, but it's it can build up on me. Oh, yes. Yes, it can. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's our character situation. Um, looks like a Samlin, uh, Garzula, and Feistus uh, are all going to get in advance. Uh, five points get you that. Um, uh, and uh, as an advance... Uh, you can gain a new move from your playbook or uh, take a new move from another playbook. Um, this first advance doesn't cost you any gold. After this, it will start costing you gold. Um, if you're a spell caster, when you advance, you get a free new spell. Uh, uh, if you're not a spell caster, uh, when you advance, you get a free one point gear pick. How generous is that? 
Samlin. Let's come to you, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're taking up, how long are we after that? A few days, a week, a couple of weeks, a month? Um, let's see here. I think it makes sense that we're like a week out. Okay. It's so probably still kind of in that same state. So we're going to leave everybody's states kind of where they're at. Um, and uh, you have uh, the, the sitch that uh, you're living in this grotto, right? Yeah. That's a fine word for it, a grotto. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, this is the... Uh, your landlady is the third and honored daughter? Yep. Okay. Um, and over the last few days, there have been more of those posters going up in the area. The bills uh, from uh, the Upright Sorcerer's Office uh, talking about uh, 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 sorcerers misusing their power sorcerers not following the proper ways sorcerers being dangerous all of all of that kind of thing and uh you know uh on a couple of them they have written in the names of sorcerers in the neighborhood including your own really yes hmm Let's see here. Um, and is this just like a, a big word salad thing that's up there? This, that's what they do. They come and they they put these these up, uh, and uh, they they're kind of agitating the locals. Really? Uh, yeah. There are there are a few of them that have been wandering around. Uh, they go to places. There are there are some bars some taverns and things like that, that, that don't allow magic. Um, okay with uh, don't, uh, don't allow the, the use of that. And those, oh, no. those become kind of places. Magic. <laughs> so, so do they name my crimes? No, you're just, you're just a, a questionable sorcerer. Oh, really? Um, a suspect, but there are it's all insinuation and innuendo. Really? Um, what if I have a few of their names? Um, I would like to add their names to the list of the suspects. So you want to want to go around and uh, uh, create a problem that way? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cause a certain amount of confusion. I have no problem with this. All right. I think that's actually divert. Okay. Let's try it. What's your mood? Are you still joyful as you're doing this? I mean, it's, concerned. this is a little bit close to home, and I just don't want to, I don't want third and honored daughter to be upset with me because she's like my, my model, you know, of what, what I'm supposed to be here when I'm doing the Samlin thing. So I kind of need some extra tutorial time. Okay. All right. Let's so, have your roll. Okay. I guess I should look and say what I am going to use. Um... I'll probably use mad. Okay. Because it's just a little ridiculous. So I get a six. Samlin! I turn. Thank God! You see this big, bushy, you know, uh, fur lined coat, classic barbarian, loincloth, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, hot boots, high hard. Um, you know, the, the backpack on that sort of scars on his face, big bushy beard. And, uh, he, he looks and he raises his arms. I, I thought I had lost you. Thought I had lost you. And he comes stumbling towards you. Do I know who this is? You know, you know, some of Samlin stuff, but it's like the most recent memories is what you have as part of it. So you have no idea who this is. All right. I'm like rushes forward, clearly going to take you and lift you up in an embrace. 
uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> And and I think that you know how like when a bull comes towards the bull, you know, bullfighter. The, the torridor. Just, yeah, the torridor. There's a word for it. That's right. I will step to the side like I have a, a red cape and let him kind of go past me and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. A couple of these ribs are sort of broken. Let's be careful with each other. Oh, oh I'm sorry, my wife. I, it has just been so long. <laughs> and we'll cut there. Okay. <laughs> Um, Garzula, where are you hanging your head? Are you still sleeping in your sanctuary at this point? Yes. Um, <clears throat> how are you feel? You're still, you're still freaked out after that attack, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, he is, um, he is, he is uh, attempting to just sort of settle himself. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why he's staying in the sanctuary is trying to basically settle his, settle his nerves again and get get a hold of his emotions because that uh you know that threw him off uh severely it uh, messed with how he was how he had been thinking about the persecutors um and he thought that that uh, that should have worked and it very much did not um so he is uh he's basically just trying to uh trying to meditate he's studying some of the uh some of the older scrolls um He's distracting himself by studying that uh, that weird magic artifact that uh, may or may not be working in his sanctuary, um, just as a way to like get his mind off of what almost happened to him in the alley. If his if his uh, friends hadn't been there, that could have turned very turned out very 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 badly. And what is the thing? The 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 very human impulse or requirement that drives you out of your sanctuary? I think uh, he doesn't have any food in there. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no, there's uh, no food to drink. Like he brought in like a, just a, just a skin of, of uh, water um, when he came in, but uh, he didn't think to get any food. So, like, after a day, he's, despite, in spite of himself, in spite of his attempts to focus, he is starving. Um, and even the pain in his throat from that, uh, from that thing's attack uh, isn't going to, it doesn't uh, keep him from needing food. So he's it's, going out to get food. And so uh, you will, will head, head out. Uh, and again, we established that you're in kind of a, a, a market area. So immediately... You're hit by all of the the food smells, you know, uh, like when you haven't eaten and then you go grocery shopping and you're like, I want everything. Um, and it's all kind of roiling over you. What 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 would be Garzula's food of choice? What what is high orc fare? Oh, I think uh, he uh, orcs like uh, a. It's it's pasta with huge chunks of meat and vegetables in it. You might call it a stew, but there's so much there's so many noodles in there that it's not really a stew anymore. Is it is it tomatoey? Is it mushroomy? Is it spicy? What are we talking here? I think it's mushroomy and spicy. Okay, um, so yeah, you'll you'll head uh, over to that, um, and you'll see a couple of. Uh, 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 steel toe orcs. They're they're not high orcs. They're uh, another uh, from another nation, and uh, they're smaller. Um, uh, and they're they're one of those groups that that they're kind of millennial, uh, so they tend to scoff at the the whole high orc thing. And and you see them give you the side eye as as you come in and uh the cook recognizes you ah da, da, garzula come come sit 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 you haven't been to the stall for a few days i have i have been distracted but your fare drew me back what's wrong with your throat it was yeah i had some trouble with the uh, apple had some trouble with a serious cold a while back ah so ah, hold on hold on, up. hold on I've got some puny extract here. It's honey coated. Hold on. And he pulls out this sort of dripping 
gummy thing from a jar and it would just just suck on this he like grimaces a little because he's pretty sure he knows what this is and he like he he takes it okay oh, yeah. it starts as honey like the honey is clearly to conceal the fact that what's inside is is horrific um it's it's like deeply concentrated robitussin in some ways um uh and uh, as you are sitting there you will see this shadow kind of fall over you and you will see this tall elf very broad shoulder for an elf uh not particularly well dressed um more temple kind of robes comes and uh sits down next to you you have the feeling that maybe he's been watching for you master raccoon it is raccoon or is it raccoon uh raccoon raccoon master raccoon you have ignored the entreaties of my master And he sort of raises his head because he's still got that thing in his mouth. So uh -huh. it's really hard for him to talk. So he just sort of raises an eyebrow as if he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know what this guy's talking about. Or Chara understands that you may be hesitant. Understands that you may have other matters, but it, it, also sense that you were perhaps in trouble. Perhaps Orchara could help you. And he's continuing to sort of like try to deal with this horrific, you know, drop of of uh, of you know, licorice flavored Robitussin stuff. Uh, and eventually he manages to manages to choke the last of it down and he looks at the at the elf. And he says Yes, yes. I have heard your master's entreaties, but it is not something I can offer assistance with. I don't know. Ex I don't know what he thinks I can give him. That's but the thing is, you ha you and he haven't really communicated. Perhaps you would come tonight to a chrysalis ceremony that he is is holding. He would be feted and honored, and then you and and my. My God can sit down and speak of things to be, things to come. Because I think that maybe you got off on the wrong hoof. And uh, he he sort of pinches his pinches the bridge of his nose a little, um, and he says, "Very well. Where is this? Where is this ceremony to be held?" Ah, uh, well, we are. Uh, of, of course, uh, in the uh, God Spire, um, and uh, we have been given uh, a uh, space at the Brass Theater. How, how uh, so did how did your how did your master get a space at the Brass Theater? I thought that was the entire problem, as he was not being recognized. We have. We've increased donations of late. Ah. So you will what, come? Excellent. What, I will carry yeah. that word back to Ochara. What, uh, what, 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 uh, what time is this? Is the ceremony uh, set to begin? Three hours after dusk, it shall begin. So that's the time. Three hours after dusk. Very yes. well. And uh, he he likes he like uh, takes out a small wax tablet and like scribbles onto it and puts it back into his the folds of his cloak. Archara will be so pleased to hear that you will be joining us. 
Very well. I will. I suppose I will see you there. Yes, absolutely. It is my chrysalis. Very good. Thank you. I will. Uh, I will finish my food and, and uh, attempt to uh, resolve my other business. And he will head off and leave you. Leave you to your own, Feistus. Oh, old man, old man Feistus. Um, you're kind of living on the street, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when the when the the camera comes in and finds you, uh, where are you? Where are you sleeping? Um, probably just. Like, uh, one of the inns, I like, I know somebody there, so, uh, but not well enough for them to actually, like, let me have a room. So, they're like, you know, sleep over in this corner of the, the stalls, and, you know, as long as there's no horse, nobody will bother you. And, uh, yeah, you, you kind of wake up, and uh, you can hear, I'm looking for Feistus Grimm. Yeah, yeah. Me and my, my guys, we got a, we got the group together. We, we, the sign said that uh, that he was here. Uh, the board board said we're looking to to bring together our warriors for his cause. Absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm Feistus Grim. What, what? And uh, you will see this group of a dozen swordsmen kind of kitted out. Maybe were... I know where Feistus Scrim is, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, uh, so I think you're going to try and divert these guys <laughs> who are clearly looking for, for, you know, uh, to be in the service of what is promised to be a lucrative contract with Feistus. Uh, um, they do not look like they have a sense of humor. Okay. Um, okay. What is your mood, your state with this? Um... Let's see. Uh, uh, sad if I mess things up and I don't get whatever connection I'm supposed to get. But at the same time, I'm more worried about them all being in danger. So are you, but, are you more afraid? Are you more sad? Or are you more mad that somebody has done this to you again? Uh, mad. Okay. Yeah. Again, um, yeah. Okay. Plus two. Five, seven, eight, nine. For, uh, for, for divert. divert. Okay. I uh, pick two. Yes. Uh, Um, they become, uh, I guess, yeah, they become sense. confused and I think I, I glean a flaw about them. Glean a flaw or slip away? Um, I, let's slip away. Yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> Um, so, so what is the story that you tell them? That you tell Quinnick of Sailshore, he and his his eleven stout men, they wish to, to be the twelve, and and with the thirteenth warrior uh, of uh, 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 you, or the person they they are asking for, who's not you, most definitely, Feistus, uh, uh they will 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 sail and reclaim Feistus's lost kingdom. Um. Oh yes, uh, uh, sorry about that. That was an old statement. He's he's already done it. He's all good. <laughs> Is the contract fulfilled. Yes, completely done. It was, it was only just posted. 
amazing work that place is grim. <laughs> and they 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 look at each other like they're kind of pissed. Okay, well, we'll find this, Feistus, and we will see if that is true then. Then, as they are grumbling to themselves, you have the opportunity to sidle away if you wish. Yeah. Good luck with that. I hear he's a, a crafty one. Uh, <laughs> crafty or not, if he has wronged us, we will have our pound of flesh. Um, and where do you head from there? What's your usual routine? You get a few coins. You've got a gold coin to your name. Yeah. How are you going to make some money? Um, he, he goes to the uh, like the market square or like a similar place, and he kind of just starts, you know, uh, kind of busking, telling you know, here's the history of King Alexander, and this is what he did, and. No. Let me tell you a grand tale. Do you think you're good at this? Yeah. Yeah. So you do. I mean, you're you're no bard. Um, no. Uh, 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 but but you're you're a decent storyteller, and uh, you will probably uh, uh, in in make enough coins to 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 buy your meals for the day. Um. Uh. uh even as you probably hear some rumors about oh, Feistus. You have a sense that that board is working overtime on you. <sighs> Let's come to Zelda. Zelda, you're staying with your uncle. I put a picture in, of him into the uh, into the people's thing. There. Oh yes, yes. He he's there, and uh, he's uh, so Zelda going. Out to have with with the uh, out into the thing. Who says? Uh, says it, did you want some porridge? Uh, uh, perhaps a quick bite before I go. I I have oh, good. sticking to the ribs and the stuff. All the pot, drinking and all the set it up, and then it's uh, you know, I, and I was young and they never had any raisins and the things, but now everyone has raisins everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, a meringue. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, so he will will uh, uh, provide you with a very basic meal. Um, uh, and uh, what is what is your plans for the day? I I'm thinking I have a bit of cash. I want to ask two things before we get going. Uh, yeah. One is uh, magic missile doesn't really fit me for magic, and I was looking on your magic thing. Can I take something like knock instead? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'll switch that out here in a second. Uh, second thing is, have I noticed in this time my little street urchin that's following around for my trouble, or am I still sort of a oh, he's, certainly, he's certainly been around and about. You probably gave him the the slip, but uh, you you he's, he's popped up. Uh, okay. You know that Cest is determined. To to have his uh, his payback. Yeah, which I mean, I didn't get anything. What to pay? Uh, I mean, I died for it. I'm going to. Uh, uh, my intent is to go shopping. Uh -huh. um, I am wanting because of these dangers and the things here that have happened, and I think that I need something to protect me, and. I'm interested in finding a, a bit of armor, fairly discreet, not particularly heavy or anything, just something that'll protect me. But there will also, when I shift, when Rasputin and I come together, will also kind of cover our body together. So I figure would be magical. Yeah. So a one armor magical Quiet is my hope. Does that fall into the two gold yeah. area? Uh, I think, well, uh, uh, so it'd be armor, one armor. Um, you want it quiet. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that, uh, that, uh, let me look at that. Because you can have two armor with 
one tag, I wonder if I can get two tags with a one armor. Yeah, um, but I think uh, since that's we the 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 so the the two tags is sort of the negative ones there, the heavy bulky. Um, so it would cost you three gold right now as it stands to do that. Mm. Gotcha. So I could have it quiet for me, or I could have it magical for us both. Well, here's what I'm thinking: is it'll be the the, the tag is is like reconfigures as like the mm. magic on it, mm -hmm. and then quiet, you know, would be the the other tag on it uh, as well as the the armor. Now, do you already have have regular armor? I do not. Okay, so yeah, I think th three gold is what you're talking. Okay, because uh, gotcha. How um, much do you have right now? I have two. And we never heard back from our person who owes us money, have we? Oh, you could go and try and track him down. I could try and track him down, which means it puts behind my shopping. But I, we deserve to be paid, and we did our job. So, yeah, I think I'm going to be going and looking for him while keeping a careful eye out for that urchin who has been following me. Absolutely. Um, well, let's. Uh, I think that uh, you are trying to read the world. All righty. All right. It's in other moves, isn't it? It's in basic moves. Oh, it's in basic moves. Okay. And all righty. So I think that that would mean I'm going out in with... I'm getting where I'm starting to worry about spikes here. Um... Yes. I suppose I'm a little peeved we haven't been paid, so I guess it'll be bad. Um, so I'll bark it. Okay. I mean, I would go for sad or peaceful, but I just don't think they're appropriate. Uh, so, rolling away. So, eight. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I have the Read the World written there. Okay. Uh, you're going to get one hold. I'm going to give you some basic information. I'm going to give you one hold. We're going to do it like Hearts of Wulin, um, where you can ask a question about this, because this is more of a research study, a broad one. The analyze and the um, probe are very much in the scene, looking at people or looking at a thing. This is the broader one. So I'm going to give this a little more open, which means that with a, a 7 and 9, you get one hold to spend on a question or to make a declaration. Um, so, uh, people haven't seen him for, uh, a few days and I've got his name written down here. I'm sure, uh, uh, Cassinius, uh, uh, Cassinius Ghoul. Um, uh, people haven't seen him and, uh, his contacts are a little worried. Um, that's, that's sort of the basic word on the street. Um, and now I'm going to let you, you can ask a question based on your research as you're hitting the street, or okay. you can make a declaration. And <clears throat> he hired us to do, he hired you guys in the past to do little things. Um, and he's always been a, a you know, I'm good for it. Mm -hmm. Giving you a little coin kind of puts you off and he, he owes each of you a couple of gold. I mean, is he the sort of person who sent us off to find things for him, or were we couriers, or did we? Yeah, very them? minor stuff, you know. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, carry something someplace, go and stand outside and do watch, you know. Uh, uh, he's he's a a bottom of the 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 the, the rung uh, fixer. Gotcha. Bottom so rung bottom of the ladder fixer. Yeah. So you know, he goes out the okay. So he was probably sending us for other people's things rather than his own. Right. Um, then I think I'd like to declare something. Okay. I think that uh, the only rumor I get of him, and in fact, the only person who claims to have seen him, or the last person in chronology that has seen him, says they saw him... Uh, running towards the sewers 
looking like something was chasing him, but no one could see what it was that was chasing him. And they'll tell you that was over in Red Tooth Town. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, they know that he'd had some dealings with some bugbears. Um, and uh, that apparently that it all worked out. Um, and then they, they saw him a few days ago running. The same day that you had the situation with the bard. Interesting. Okay, so he was perhaps coming to meet us. All right. Um, I think I'm going to at least head over in that direction then and maybe see if I can do a little, you know, between Rasputin and I, we're fairly decent at, at locating stuff. And Red Tooth Town is a town uh, that, that you don't mind too much. It is uh, a neighborhood that has accumulated a large number of non-humanoid peoples. Um, you know, not just the humanoid orcs or things like that, but like real, like strange folk, monstrous folk, things like that uh, live there. Um, uh, you know that there's a fairly substantial slotty community there. Mm -hmm. um, there's some, some Modrons um, and other things that are there as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you can, can head on over there. Let's take our five-minute break here, and then we'll come back and uh, see uh, who's uh, married to uh, Samlin. <laughs>
I'm kind of excited about the games I'm going to get to try out. I'm going to do Terraforming Mars, and uh, which I played for, which is cool. Um, and I'm looking at... I, I want to try Secret Hitler. You're muted, my dear. I heard that it's pretty good for a, for a deduction game. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's a neatest sound game, Freedom, I believe it's called, where you are abolitionists doing oh, co-op work. On really, the... really good. Yeah, I've heard great things about it, so I may try and give that one a shot. Yeah, and there'll be tons of of playtest demo areas in the the hall. Mm -hmm. So I've, yeah. I've laid out most everything up till Saturday evening, and I want to make sure to end early enough that I'll get to see folks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Then there's good food within when walking distance. Good mm -hmm. stuff for the evenings. Um, there's a little restaurant actually over in the Hyatt that no one really goes to. That's a decent hotel restaurant. Cool. For basic stuff, and there's the Indian Bistro. And I actually want to try and hit a place or two that's over. And we're in Germantown, and they have a apparently kind of the hip food places Ooh. going on there. And I wouldn't mind giving it a shot. And what's it? I think you said Pride's going on at the same time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that'll be happening Saturday. And uh, we're that Germantown abuts the historical gay district where they're doing some of those festivities. Oh yeah, it's, it, it'll be all over the place, um, and it's a massive, massive parade for uh, during the day on Saturday. So oh, that's kind of cool. It's very cool. It is. It, it, I, I've loved it because it's always been such a a interesting intersection <laughs> of community people there. Because <laughs> there's always always a group of people who have done with the parade. And you, they walk into the the center because they're conditioned, and you could see the look on their face, like, "Oh, <laughs> like the <laughs> these are are truly goobers. These are truly <laughs> gamers." That's awesome. Yeah, is there a lot of cosplay at Origins? It's not as much. No, no, I would say it's very, very modest. Um, I, I like. I would say very little. I mean, if, if people are in costumes, they're in costumes for LARPs gotcha. um, or they're in costumes for booths. Yeah. I never do any of that. I yeah. Just, yeah. No, it's it's cool. very different from, from Gen Con where everybody's cosplay fighting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing is, of course, uh, we'll, we'll go over to the North market. It's just across the street. It's a two. It's a, a a big indoor market of of food stalls. Oh, that's uh, awesome! That they're set up for all kinds of ethnic stuff. They've got some slow, like a slow food booth. They've got they had a Mongolian dumpling place that was okay. Hmm. They've got Belgian waffles. They've got barbecue. All of that stuff. Oh, how cool! Yeah, and they've got a a, a gourmet ice cream place there. That rich. We'll insist we go to a couple of times. Ooh, excellent. It's pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Rich always gets the same thing, though. So He does. He, he'll, he'll try all the little sample things, and then he gets the same thing every year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Rich. He's a creature <laughs> habit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but it, it, the the other thing is, uh, uh, Cool Stuff Inc. used to bring their ding and dent stuff, uh, but they don't anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but usually, there's some good deals on board games in the the hall, but but nothing 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 dynamite. And there's very little that's at the show that you're like, I can't get this anywhere else. They don't do much of like the way old out of stock stuff or anything. There aren't as many places that do that as there used to be. You, you may find some older and actually in terms of board games and war games that may be your best bet. Mm. Um, uh, they may have some stuff there. All right. So, Samlin. Yes. This guy 
has has declared that uh, he is in fact apparently your husband. Oh. I say, where have you been? I have completed the quest that you set me. Amazing. You have to tell me all about it. Absolutely. When I returned back to to the the city, you must have must have thought that I had died because you had left. Um, though someone said soon after I had left on my quest, which seemed odd to me, but but I've not not thought of, of that. Uh, but uh, yes, I have, and he holds up this leather bag. I have the Gorgon's egg. Oh my goodness! And I, I look at the the bag, and I go, "You haven't." She goes, "Is it safe in there?" Yes, I have done all the rituals that the the old man told me to do to protect it, and it is safe and secure in here, preserved and kept, and warmed. So as as I as I said. Here it is. You see it go, amazing. Well, let's go back and tell me. You have to tell me how you did this. Yes, absolutely. Do you have uh, lodgings near here? Ah, yes, yes. But they're being cleaned today, so. Cleaned? Oh, you are extravagant. <laughs> and she goes, no, no, there was a small accident. That's all. Um, ah. Oh, mage is so dumb. Uh, so, uh, how about if we just go and get some some toast? They have very fine toast. Perhaps Down. a drink? And a drink. Toast yes. and a drink. How about yes. that? All right. Yes. Lead on. Okay. And Where I'll do you take him? Take him to the cheapest beer place that has toast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, uh so uh, uh you go to Ferdinand's yeah, uh, Ferdinand. yeah. and uh F Ferdinand is street beer essentially it's it's the the kind of the the lowest possible uh uh, uh beer with uh you know uh, uh sometimes hand me downs from other places that got yeah. mixed in it's kind of a brew thing that's going on I don't think um, about it. I have more stomachs than you really want to know. Yes, um, but it's it's fine. Uh, so my real concern is that I need to get enough in him so I can get him to actually tell me stories. Uh -huh. And my hope is, and I'll ask for like every conversation because I'm hoping that one of them he will mention the other character, the other person in his story, saying his name. I'm just trying to get the name out of him. Okay, so I think you're going to try and sway him. Uh, okay, yes, let's do that. I'm sure it'll go excellently. I, I wish I were Zelda, because she's good at the swindle. I'm not as good. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm just rolling with, I don't know, what are my options here? What do you want to roll with? Yeah, that seems like a good question that I haven't thought about. It's a sort of scrabbling sense of what's going on. Um, let's see here. How about... Hmm. I guess I'm a little bit worried, so maybe a little fear? Okay, that seems good. Yeah, all right. So, oh, well, that's an excellent roll. So I got a nine plus two is an 11. Okay. What is the, the, the one thing that you're going to have to do to kind of get them to do this? Beer. More beer. Is um, it beer? Uh, so you're going to uh, need to head in some gold, owe them a future debt, uh, give them something now instead of later, do a favor for them, or give a piece of yourself to them, body or heart. Just rattled those off again. Could you give me those again? I, just, I, I, I could I could point you to the middle column of the basic moves tab. Oh man, I hate reading them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Um, let's see here. So um Yeah, 
I think, okay, so here's the thing. She knows Samlin. She kind of wants to be Samlin. At some point, Samlin married this guy. So she's like, okay. And so she'll lean into the thing about being glad to see him and, you know, all of that. I mean, she's like, does he, you know, she's trying to figure it out. But yeah. And I said, listen, I am Zersul of Umberhaven, and you do not want to mess with me. You and they did, but we took care of it. It was all, you know, they did. They did want to mess with me, but, you know, because people didn't know where Umberhaven was. Didn't know that it was the most important magical reagent capital city. I, the son of the local local baron, I know, it's just, that's, that's the thing. But uh, I just... Just yes, yes. Have you been back to see your family? Uh, I went back to see you, but you were gone. Well, I, I mean, but you saw them, right? Yes, yes. So how's your dad doing? Uh, fine, fine. He had he had words, but oh. that's nothing here nor there. Everything's okay, right? Well, he, you know, he never approved of our 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 marriage. It makes me feel bad. Uh, oh, 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 he, oh, he, oh, he kind of gets and he gets small, tries to pull himself in. No, 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 no. Uh, I, said, I want things to be good for you. I, I, I know, and, and, and I know, I know. We will pay no attention to, to the, the, the rumors in here saying, now you can leave this horrible place. Come with me back home. She goes, and she sort of stops and goes, well, if you're not getting along with your father. My father is old. He will pass on, and, and then we will sit on the throne of Umberhaven. Well, Ancient and stony, cold when the wind whips through the north, but brisk, well, refreshing. Brisk. <laughs> that sounds pretty nice. Um, it, it is, you know. Well, you know, it is something to look forward to, but this is a prime opportunity. We should travel around this city, and you should see the sights and the gifts, the 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 ideas for Umberhaven that you might be able to bring back to improve it when you sit on the throne, so that you'll be. The best leader they've ever had. I, 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 I understand. And you see, he pats the egg, but I have the egg. That's going to be great. As you asked, I have the egg. All right. Okay. Well, let's, yeah. It's just like, is there anything I asked for this egg to have any memory of what what a gorgon's egg would do. Well, let's have you roll. I think this is read the world. <laughs> that sounds great. Let's do it. Okay. And I'll rewrite that move to be more clear. Okay. I don't I don't care whether it's clear or not. I'm going to roll some dice and you can tell me what happens. All right. What are you going to roll with? Oh man, that's the hard part. This is the, this is the hardest part of this game. People say all oh, these games are easy. It is not true. Um, how about? And I had used fear twice. You know, the thing is, is I've got that dart through me. So in some ways, I do think that this is almost a power roll, not a okay. fear roll, but a thing about yeah. that. So, so uh, check a box on power and clear clear a box on fear. Okay, and. Um, Make a roll. A six. Oh, man. A six, huh? No. You've been here for a while. Yeah. You've been talking to him. He's been doing this. He's been going on. There's a little bit of stress because you've really had to, to you've been delving down deep into 
your feelings for Samlin and the cover and so on. And you suddenly realize how hungry you are. And you get to Mark XP. Like that full on doppelganger, got to drink the soul hunger, kind of washes over you. All right. And he says, That spikes yes, out something. The egg. So now we can consummate. And I think. And I'm going to cut from there. All right. Garzula. We are back to you. This this uh, this pissant god come calling again, kind of pushing you around. And you're a little afraid. I want you to come to. What would you do? You're gonna go to ground. You're gonna go get get allies. What do you think? I think he's going to ask a couple of friends to come to this thing with him. Um, okay. Who are you gonna track down? Uh, I think he's going to return to his sanctuary, and in that sanctuary, he has the scry-proof glass that lets him communicate with his friends. So I think he's probably going to try and uh, get in touch with Feistus. He thinks Feistus might know something um, that uh, might be helpful. He is a scholar, after all. Um, and So let's start with Feistus. Feistus, you have just slipped away from these uh, uh, sail, sto sh sail shore mercenaries um, gotten away. What What is that like with the crystal? What, I mean, is it just a sending of message? Is it a vision? What do you think that that is? I think um, like the uh, whatever reflective surface is closest to them, um, they will see like an image of him talking to them through that surface. Hey, and it, hey, and it's, yeah, and it's and it's just it's just them. It's focused on their perception, like it's tied to them. That's why it's scry proof. It's not, not something that can be tapped into. But so, Physes, you're going by this, you know, mirrored bronze shield that's that's in the market, kind of drawing people's eye, and uh, you will see Garzula manifest in there, and he's like Physes. Yes. Best to meet me at the uh, at uh, at the uh, Argyle's House of Noodles. I I need to discuss something with you. Do are the other people that are looking at this like shield noticing him or? They don't see him. Okay. They just see you talking to a shield. Uh, it's noodles a hot do city, so they're going uh, magical communication. <laughs> He's either communicating or he's insane. We move away from either one of those. <laughs> House of Noodles. Excellent. But uh, you're buying. <laughs> Very well. Um, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you head over there to meet him or do you call your other compatriots? Um, he will try and make contact with the others. Uh, I think... Probably the, the next one he probably thinks would be helpful would be the other the other wizard. Um, so he'll try and make contact with her first, Samlin. Samlin, Samlin, you're there. Hunger roiling over you. And you look down into your beer. Horrible, <laughs> stinking. Like, it's got flecks of foam and grit on the top of it. And uh, you will see uh, Garzula looking back out at you. All right. And I... I'm like, oh, oh, Garzula, what's up? Uh, I have a situation that I could use some assistance with. Um, I stand up. I'll be right there. Maybe at the Argula's house, house of Noodles. Excellent. And I go, I have to go. <laughs> oh, I'll go with you. And he um, leaps to his feet, sword, sword at the ready. And she sort of stops and goes... And not with that Gorgon egg, you won't. <laughs> oh. Mm. Mm. Let's have you divert. And then we will we'll roll back to Garzula. 
<laughs> Stop making me roll. I'm spiked on power. So well, then, are you spiked on power? Yeah, because that's the, the thing of going hungry is I'm spiked. Oh, yeah. So you will roll power with plus one, and you get to clear a check. Do I add one to whatever my power score is? No. No, just No, if you, when you're spiked, you roll with whatever state it is, and that becomes a plus one. Everything else is a minus two. I roll an eight to divert. Okay. Um, so he's like, but but you promise that you will, will, will meet me back here soon. Oh, man. I don't know how long this is going to take. But I, you promise. You swear. And she goes, I'm definitely coming back. No doubt about it. <laughs> will you give him an oath? Um, and, and it's like, uh, sure, sure. She's almost sort of distracted by it. Yes, I'll be back. Wait, are you going to be here? Well, say yes. Uh, okay. Um, and she'll like leave some coppers in case you need more toast. <laughs> <laughs> Might have something besides the toast. Not particularly filling. And this beer is somewhat mm, acidy. Mm. I think you need more than copper. <laughs> Give him a little bit more. <laughs> so I'm going to clear one of your power boxes and it'll will sort of work back its way back up as you do that. All right. I'm like, I hope Arzula has a sorcerer for me to eat. I mean, <laughs> Uh, Garzilla, do you do you call Zelda as well? Uh, yes, uh, he'll do that, and then he'll head to the uh, to the Argula's house of noodles. Sure, uh, Zelda, you're heading over uh, to to Red Tooth Town. Mm -hmm. What is the reflective surface that you you see? Is it is it a puddle? Is it yeah. a window? Yeah, I think it's a puddle. Okay. Um, and uh, Garzula asks for your help. Um, is it really pressing? I'm trying to find our, um, our gentleman who didn't pay us. Oh, that, that is also pressing, but, uh, my matter does involve a god. Oh. Uh, a good I mean, god. It's, 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 it's Orchara of Rabble, but still. Oh, well, okay. If, uh. If you need me, I'm there. See, we're meeting at Argula's House of Noodles. Oh, I like noodles. Garzula, tell me about Argula's House of Noodles. What is, what is besides we know it serves noodles, um, uh, what is the other major feature of this establishment? I think it uh, it is a um, establishment that is run by a family of of orcs that uh, fix all of the old noodle dishes uh, that Garzula really, really loves. Uh, so we've so established that orcish cuisine is primarily noodle and pasta based. I like this. They carb load. It makes sense. Yeah. And uh, so they fix all of those traditional, they use the old recipes um, and uh, they, their only concession to uh, more modern cuisine is they do serve less spicy versions of all of the dishes for for uh, other species so that they can subject their tender digestions to their cuisine. Do you want that standard or weak? <laughs> That's exactly. how they put it. Exactly. I'll get you the weak noodles. But they serve they serve rye noodles and buckwheat and and all kinds of grain noodles you know uh, all different cuts and all different things and all different kinds of sauces um and there's the 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 sound of them you know the multiple hot pans going um and the the sizzling sound of that um uh and uh, the four of you can can meet up in there um it is it is has multiple grills going so this place is hot even though it's cold outside like like it's probably like a little bit of rain and snow outside and in here is just burning hot um if they take off various coats and things to to do there and uh um they'll uh if garzula is buying uh you know they'll they'll bring you over a a, a big uh set of uh essentially uh orcish tapas noodles you know, uh, there's like a, a dozen, a dozen plates, uh, and everybody gets some, uh, get some, uh, some chopsticks and forks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to say something, 
all of you will notice that Garzula is like kind of freaked out. But you'll also notice that Samlin looks very shaky. How do, how does that what what are the, the telltale signs for that, Samlin? Um I think that um for the ones who know that she's a shapeshifter, one of the things that they see is that like sometimes one of her arms gets a little bit longer than it ought to be, you know, and she corrects it. She does a lot of the kind of placing things back and having to look. Um, and her eyes are a little bleary. Um, and she speaks with the delay. When she gets there, she asks Garzula, so are there going to be magic users there? Possibly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who is in uh, this this sort of mini cult of Orchara of Rabble. Oh, um, okay. Cool. That's sometimes they use magic, right? But apparently they've gotten enough money to get themselves a, a, a space in the God Spire now. Before they were meeting in the in the in the back of in in the back of a of an old uh, of an old uh, tavern. Uh, now they've actually gotten a space in the God Spire. That sounds promising. <laughs> and they are holding some sort of ceremony they're calling a chrysalis tonight. Or excuse me, chrysalis. Uh, that sounds snooty. I'm not sure exactly what they uh, what they're going to be doing. Is um, it like a butterfly comes out? I'll, I don't remember Orchara having anything to do with butterflies. Um, maybe maybe Feistus remembers uh, more than I do, but it's, I mean, Orchara had become obscure before I came to the city, so. What god is that, Orchara? I'm, like, for some reason, like, I'm remembering, he had, uh, like, minor he had fought, Yeah, he had he had uh, he had been important at, at one point and had fallen into near complete obscurity until this new cult had sort of uh, clustered around him for some reason, and I'm still not sure exactly what that reason is. Uh, Feistus, do you uh, have your studies given you any additional information on Orchara of Rabble? Um, I don't know. Have they? Would you like to read the world? Yes. Where does where that move at? Uh, so it's uh, under pro, but we're doing it oh, okay. uh, a little bit differently than I have it written there. Essentially, okay. uh, on a 10 plus, you're going to get two hold. Uh, on a 7 and 9, you're going to get one. And you can spend that hold to ask sort of a big situation question or declare a detail. Yeah. Um, okay. So... I think, you know, he's come to me for information, so I think that is a sense of power. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. He's come to you. There's somebody who, who isn't trying to, uh, to, to get you gutted. Uh, six, seven, uh, eight. Eight. So you have one hold. So, um, so I can either give a detail or ask a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the name is Ochara of Rabble. Yes. And I do know he, he, they seem to believe he has something to do with hooves now, but I don't know exactly what significance that has. Something to do with what? Hooves. Hooves. Because when I spoke to his messenger, he mentioned that we may have gotten off on the wrong hoof. So I'm thinking he's abducted some sort of symbol that involves hooves. Yeah, so I'm going to ask, uh, uh, what is Orchara the, the god of? Like, what's his domains? So he was uh, amongst a pantheon that got knocked knocked down got destroyed um and he was uh amongst the sort of the malcontents of the pantheon that 
perhaps li- uh, maybe inadvertently, maybe directly, uh, uh, you know, brought this this new pantheon in and that, that cast them out. And he essentially is a god of fomenting revolution. So I'll, I'll share that. Well, so these people, these uh, these folks, may be more dangerous than I was initially thinking. They have invited me to this uh, this chrysalis ceremony, um, and I stated I would I would go just to hopefully get them to stop pestering me. I don't I don't um, know what a chrysalis or chrysalis would have to do with I, violent, uh, you know, overthrowing. You. So I don't know how the two tie, but it's definitely intriguing. Oh, this this cult is a resurgence, so perhaps they've added some sort of new ritual or new significance to it. It's something we can learn. Hopefully, we can. Hopefully, uh, with your help, we, I can deal with these. With the, well, with rebirth can sometimes be violent. Uh, it could be a changing of the way things were to something new. Yeah, but this fellow seemed to indicate it was his chrysalis, meaning that it had something to do directly with him. I don't, but who knows? But I could try right here. Do you think I'll get a chance to punch him? Very possibly. Uh, the... Let's go. I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> As I said, it sounds intriguing, but is there any way that we could make some money from this? Well, this cult does seem to have a lot of money. Um, like I said, they've seemed to they've bought their way into the God Spire. I love that by the way, they had absolutely no proof of any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you need help, then I'm more than happy to do it for you. Um, the money would be nice. I appreciate it. Maybe we can figure out a way to deal with this situation and uh, get some sort of recompense for it. And then after this is after this is dealt with, maybe we can finish tracking down um, Kixenius and see what we can find out about him. I, I've learned a little, but not much. Um, but, uh, just so I could be clear, ultimately we're just wanting to make sure they're not coming after you anymore, right? That's what we're looking for. Trying trying to stop the ceremony. No, I don't, I mean, I mean, if we get there and it's some sort of horrific blood ritual, yeah, I mean, we, maybe we'd need to step in, but I don't know that that's what's going on. I would just like the, I would just like the, them to leave me alone, but it's a cult, so I'm not really sure how much they're wanting to persuade me and how much they'd just be happy to actually like get their hands on me in a secluded place. Mm. Gotcha. So you may be the bloody sacrifice. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have some suspicions, but, uh, you know, but they did come to me, you know, in broad daylight and ask me, whereas... Uh, if they needed just me for a blood sacrifice, they could have just basically caught me on the way back from the tavern, uh, and you know, after dark and dragged me off. Okay. So I'm hoping they're not going to be you know not going to be you know immediately violent, but I can't put that out of the realm of possibility. Well, we'll protect you. So when is this happening? Uh, tonight, three hours after dusk. Oh my God, that's hours away. <laughs> I'm well, it's hungry. Only, it's, well, it's not that long. I mean, it's only like a you know, it's already it's it's already past dusk. So we we uh, you know, he looks at the he look he looks outside looks out one of the windows. 
uh, moon, we're almost at uh, moonrise, so it should be only another like hour. We could probably start heading in that direction. Yes. Let's do it. Are you all right, Sam? Would you, you're usually so calm. And she kind of goes, I am really hungry. We just had an ass load of noodles. <laughs> and she steps and goes, I'm not noodle hungry. You're wanting dumplings? Let's go. Let's go, little girl. <laughs> and I want to uh, ask, how much yeah. do we know of your doppelgangerness? Did we know you before you were Samlin? I have no idea. Let's, let's you... look at your, your debts there. And see. I know that Meistus kind of knows I'm not. Yeah, I know what Samlin really is. And you know that Samlin is able to change her shape because she helped you out of a jam using that, Zelda. That's true. That's true. Okay. That could, that could just be a wizardy thing, though. Right. Right. It could be. That's the awesome thing about sorcerers. I suppose the big question is, how long have we known you? Um, let's see. How long has she been Samlin Dart? 18 weeks. Have we known each other longer than that? I feel like I know you so well, but... That's just because I'm very likable. Mm, all right. So so we've only known each each other a few months. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Physis and Zelda, don't forget uh, when you are... Oh, Zelda hasn't gotten an advance yet, but Physis, you got an advance. Don't forget you get a spell, a free spell with that, too. Um... So the four of you will 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 head over. Again, the city is huge. Um, there's probably, you know, you have to kind of make that debate about whether you you get, you know, uh, a, a tuk tuk cart or uh, whether you try to go find and go on one of the ghost rails or something like that to to get across town. Um, uh, but uh, it probably eats up the next couple of hours just getting over there. Um, by the time you've reached there, Samlin, you are really hungry. I could eat two sorcerers. You could eat two sorcerers. I could go for sorcerer. Um, so uh, you will head into this area. This place, Godspire... R is a neighborhood, grand neighborhood that is where fallen gods go in this city. It is this this area. Uh, it includes the Invisible Temple. Um, uh, there's uh, the Black Gate, which is a nexus to the various underworlds. All of all of that kind of thing. Um, tell me, uh, Zelda. What's another feature of this Godspire neighborhood that you see as you go go through here? Oh, you're Zelda. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, that's me. Um, so as we're going through here, other details. Um is, it, is, there, is there a wall around this neighborhood? Is it open to the other areas? Is it defined in some ways, a particular look? No, I think that, uh, yeah, I think that what we have is, rather than walls, we have pillars that have these almost like gargoyle heads on them that define the perimeter. And, uh, and legend talks of the th spirits that are kind of inhabited or will take up residence in these gargoyle heads. Uh, and uh, there are various manufacturer. No one's exactly sure. Uh, some people say that they were put up by the, the paladins that keep an eye out for rogue gods and that kind of thing. Some people say they put it by the gods themselves, like the ones that are actually up to, to keep these people in line. Um, uh, but they're a popular tourist attraction because they're all different. And so uh, uh, they, they make for a 
a good walking tour. Um, uh, Garzula, what's another thing that you you see here? What's another feature of this this region of the city? I think uh, maybe it got the name Godspire because in the center of it there's this uh, there's this large obelisk that supposedly lists is a uh, list of all the uh, gods that are currently officially resident in the city. Like they have a temple or a recognized presence otherwise. Oh, so it, it's almost kind of a smack in the face for these fallen gods that there is a big list of the gods who actually have worshipers oh, there yeah. at the center that recognized. Oh, yeah. And okay. so and it's a, and it's like an administrative tool for the city to go. Okay, these are the these are the temple these are the temples that contribute to the to the city, um, tax wise perhaps or or you know through other means. And uh, if you're not on that list, then they consider you either freeloader or deadbeat. Excellent. Feistus, uh, uh, give me another another detail or thing you see as you you move through here. Um, there is, um, the diff, there are different temples and they kind of, um, you know, there's a lot of stark contrast where you'll see like one place that has, you know, big, very nice glass and another one looks very, a uh, uh, bleak and, and uh, stern, um, and like one will have like a, a like Roman columns, and one will just be a uh, uh, plain plain brick. So there's a, there's a big disparity in the different uh, faith temples around. Oh, so are these like like almost like mausoleums to these dead pantheons? Is this like a representative of what their temples would have looked like when they actually had them? Yeah. Um, yeah, and and so this place looks weird. F faiths from all across the ages, faiths from all across the world. Um, uh, it is strange. Uh, no, there are no zoning laws. Um, uh, uh, essentially, um, uh, it's like a Texas city um, here. So, uh, Zelda, what's another another thing in this uh, divinely unzoned? Uh, or Samlin. Oh, sorry, sorry, Samlin. Samlin. I think uh, one of the things that um, is it quickly becomes apparent once you've been in here is there are a lot of cats, um, a lot of ferrets, and a lot of hawks. Um, and at first, you're not sure why they're around until you get next to those mausoleums and you see the that the various animals come and leave little offerings. Um, and they're they're like little transparent mice or shrews, maybe, but they're transparent. Um, and people like are saying, you know, some people think that there's just transparent ghostly mice that these animals catch. Um, but other people say that what they are is that the animals have caught prayers and brought those back. But that they look like whatever prey it is that those animals are accustomed to catching. Nice, nice. Um, so you will move through here, and you will head to the Brass Theater. Um, the Brass Theater is uh, actually formed from uh, a set of uh, servitors. Uh, from one of the fallen gods, since their bodies were rebuilt into this this theater, um, it has several wings to it, several you know, like stages within it, private ones. Um, there is a massive amphitheater at the back, but then there are smaller performance halls and things. But then there are also spaces here that are for artists uh, that. Uh, Essentially, they set up here and they get what passes for divine inspiration and they do performance art, things like that. And this is one of the sort of the weird cutting edge artistic centers of, of the city. 
Um, and uh, there are a set of, uh, you know, uh, temple acolytes that belong to no temple, but they, they run this like a temple. And uh, they, they are also the, the guides to where you need to go for a few coins uh, in their pocket. And one of them will, will come over and uh, oh, you and your, your brethren, uh, where, where is it that you seek or to look for someplace in particular, friend? We are looking for the chrysalis ceremony of Orkara of Rabble. Ah, yes, yes, please. Many of them have arrived already. Please come in. And uh, he will walk you through these great echoing halls, lots of people around. There are stalls set up for artists. Ours has kind of done makeshift studios in this. They're just kind of out in the middle things, um, almost like stalls. Um, and uh, you will move on past and you will be brought to the, to like, to be fair, pretty far in the back of this place. Like you're, you take the long route down to, you know, if this were like a, a, a movie's 14 theater, you're in the one at the end of the hall, right by the exit, you know? So when you leave, you have to make that decision. Do I walk all the way back out and through the front or do I go out the side and have to walk all the way around the building? Um, that is the theater that you are in. Um, and you get there and there are a couple of people in very clean looking outfits, like very respectable, very clean looking outfits, but very plain, sort of unadorned. Um, and they, when you arrive, they look and say, oh, oh you are Garzula. Yes. And you have brought and you have brought friends. Yes. You are truly one of us. Excellent then. Excellent, excellent. Come in. He will you will be rewarded. Um and uh you are brought in and you will see there are, are lots of people around in here, various peoples. There are probably three or four dozen seats here that are occupied there is kind of a, a stage there um and and because you you are new you're new please come we'll, we'll take you to to the front and they bring you up to the front row and they sit you in these seats and you can see that some of the people will go and and bring trays over with tea and you know uh, kind of like a, a sweet honeyed phyllo dough, uh, like a like a, a baklava, but but much worse than that. Um, um, uh, it's it's mostly honey and phyllo dough. That's that's it. It's just a big sticky thing of that. Um, and uh, uh, you will see that there are some other people who are in the same outfits, and then they have some people with them that are not. Like a number of them are brought guests. And uh, you will be seated there. And after a bit, a, a hush will kind of fall over. And, and you will see that the, the, the torches are kind of, the lanterns are kind of closed to sort of dim the lights. And the, the lanterns are kind of opened up on stage. The magical light will kind of come out there. Um, and you will see then a figure step out kind of from the curtains. And you've seen fallen gods. This is this, this is the nature of this city. Um, you've probably passed them. And regardless of them falling, they still they still give that tangible frisson, but at the same time, you know that they're not gods. It's one of the things that comes from that that feeling of you're like, oh wow, but ugh. like, like when you see somebody who's very clearly fallen on hard times, they may have made themselves look good, they may have dressed up, but you can feel the slight tinge of despair at the underside of it. But Archala uh, uh, comes up. Uh, you see, kind of red faced, has some horns sort of like a, a, a bull 
and uh, he comes out and he says, I see that we have many new people in the audience, many new people who have gathered here to hear the word. And he looks directly at you, Garzula, and we are very blessed to have with us Garzula of Raccoon, who has outdone himself on his first visitation and brought th three people with him. And he will look around and everyone will kind of... So, tonight is the chrysalis ceremony for three of our members, three of our order, who will be ascending up to the next level. They will rise up and they will be rewarded. And you will see that guy, that elf that you saw earlier comes out. And now this is Kareth. Kareth has heard the word and has spoken and he has done as we have wished. And now he moves from a simple tiger butterfly up to a monarch butterfly. He is, he has passed through that chrysalis. And he goes over and he hands what looks like a, like a, a, a metal butterfly to him and Karis like takes it and, and pins it. And he does that a couple more times, a couple more people. And then he says, now, all of you, you're all here. And I want to talk to you about a great opportunity. I want to talk to you because I know we all want to make more money, don't we? Can you say it with me? Yes. We all want to make more money. How am I to make more money? Yes. And we can do that. Now, I'm going to tell you about this opportunity. And he begins to launch into this thing about how you can... You can become your own deity. All you need is three people to give you a little bit of that divine essence. And you'll give back to them. You'll give them miracles that they've been working on. And it will go up. And within, you know, if, if you can do that, and if those people can then go out and do that, then it can rise up, it can rise up and you can move up. Let me talk to you about the levels of chrysalis and the rewards that are available at each of these levels. Well, at this point, Stanley <laughs> is gonna give Garzula such a look. <laughs> and uh, Gar Garzula just looked, it just looked like, like he, he had no idea what the hell it was. <laughs> and now I want to thank all of you for being here um, I want to thank everyone for, for coming um, and now uh, we need to uh, seize Garzula uh, for our sacrifice oh hell I um, yes <laughs> <laughs> What do you do? Because you do see acolytes kind of rising up from various seats and other people, people who've been kind of nodding off. Yeah. Were brought in. They're like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Sacrifice. So, so I think it's like blade out and and um, just just arcs of blood everywhere. 
So you're going to start like laying into the, the, the nearby mob? Yeah, to the acolytes. Okay. Uh, let's have you neutralize. Okay. <laughs> so Samlin is up like a shot, knife out, and is already cutting people. <laughs> and I, I think there's a moment of pause while I see this and I look over. Did he say sacrifice? That's <laughs> another, I, I got a 10. <laughs> Um, so what, uh, obviously inflict harm. Oh yeah. On the mob. I uh, do, uh, inflict harm, inflict harm, inflict harm. Okay. So Samlin is up and the first of the, the, the sort of the three mobs of these acolytes, she is leaping across chairs. She's knocking them down. She's throwing tea and, and Philo snacks everywhere, and she is bloodletting. Feistus, what are you doing? Uh, I think I had kind of the same reaction as Zelda. Like, wait, sacrifice? <laughs> I thought they were going to ask me for money. <laughs> oh, that, that'll come. You're not getting sacrificed. Um... You have a great opportunity. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Whoa, to join yeah. up with, with, yeah, no. with, with <laughs> join up with your Tala, help out with the sacrifice, and, and that'll skip you up a tier. You're assuming in his in the program. Hey, hey, uh, hey um, just, just look under your chair. <laughs> just look under your chair. Because <laughs> Garzula, what the hell did you get us involved with? Um, uh, um. We, I think it's time to leave now. Yes. Um, and I, I kind of want to uh, 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 look for where the threats are and everything. So uh, uh, analyze the area. Oh yeah, that seems good. Let's have you roll uh, analyze. Um, and where? What would be shocked? That's uh. uh Shocked is uh, probably scared. Uh, scared or mad. So fear or um, I'm going to say more mad because it's more annoyed is the. <laughs> yeah, I think annoyed is, is fair. Let's have you roll with uh, with annoyed. <laughs> the hell did you do? Um <laughs> Four, six, uh, eight. So yeah. eight. Um, uh, so you get uh, two questions off of analyze. Okay. Um, what if anything appears out of place? Uh, I think you will see that the sort of the lowest tier uh, people, the, the acolytes who are here are pretty weak because they have been kind of channeling their mana up the scheme. Um, and so they are, they are very definitely uh, 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 tissue paper mobs at this point. Okay. Does that seem like a fair answer? Yeah. And then you get another question. And then, uh, where's the best uh, way out or, or way past these guys? You're down at the front row. So you actually think it might be better to go over the stage and, like, go out whatever ever exits are back there to get out, at least into a different area. Because uh, otherwise you have to kind of move through the, the whole whole crowds. Does that seem fair? Yep, sounds good to me. Okay. Garzula. I think Garzula is, uh, he's going to uh, measure out the runes he has now accumulated on Orchara. Okay. Uh, he knows uh, his name. He knows his area of power, his sphere of influence. 
he knows uh, how he's running this cult now. Okay. Um, and uh, he knows that uh, he knows that he wants me for a sacrifice. Um, how many runes do you think that would equate? Because I, really I think two. Really I think at least two. I think two is going to be a good number there for that. Okay. okay. Um, so I think he's going to roll a uh, true name. Okay. And see if he can uh, exert some power over what's going on here with that. Uh, so that would be uh, roll plus runes, and that's two. Now, does the spite condition apply to this? Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure, because this spe specifically has me rolling something other than any of my emotions. I think when you have something that is specifically other, I think that circumvents the, the spike state, actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is a... Seven plus two is a nine. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, now, uh, can I the... aid him? How would you aid him with the true name thing? I'm not sure that's the, with his runes. What would be the? Well, I can. Um, let's see here. Because he's he's actually drawing on his knowledge of the true names and and using that to do his particular magic. Okay, um, so what if is if it is that I can recall something from Samlin's past about this? And okay, that. let's let's uh, let's have you uh, roll help or hinder. Okay, and uh, yeah, and I'm attempting to help. So right, okay. That, okay so. So go ahead and uh, roll with power. Um, and uh, essentially, it would be that I know that he actually has to shed his horns every spring. Um, and so they're going to be coming off soon. Uh, so that gives me a nine to help. Nine to help. Um, so you have uh, uh, then off of that, uh, off of the runes, you've got true name, you've got three hold. Okay, uh, let me see what I want to throw that hold at with him. <clears throat> um, I'm going to uh, mark them in a dramatic way. Uh, inflict uh, soul damage. And... Have them lose track of what they were doing. Basically, he is uh, using the power to remove part of his true name. So, yeah, we will see that, and we will see. She's mentioned the horns, so we do see those those burst off of him in a, a flare of divinity, uh, and that flash pours blood and mana out from him and he staggers back. Um, there's that kind of like, almost like it's uh, uh, under pressure kind of being released. Um, and he's, he's, you know, lost, lost direction. Um, Zelda, what do you want to do? Um, do I know if fallen gods are, are they mortal at this point? Can you kill a fallen God? No, no. No, you can you can you can f them up, but right. you can't kill them. Um, I've got one friend who's hacking through everyone around them, and the other one who's kind of concentrating on him. Um, my usual thing would be to get the hell out. Sure, uh, but uh, I, I'll look at Garzilla. What do you look like you're you're doing? Oh, uh, when he he uh, he stood up and he looked directly at um, at Orchara, and he spoke Orchara's uh, true name, which sounds audibly like Orchara of Rabble, but it also has this sort of like underpinning to it that, uh, like he spoke in all capital letters. Uh, and... Does it look like you're attacking this guy? Yeah, it looked like I something. I I said the words, and that's when those horns popped off, and 
be staggered back and all that other stuff that Lola Let's just described. Let's take me my shot then. So I think I, you know, Rasputin probably been around on my shoulders or something. Yeah. And we know each other well as I go, flying darkness? As I reach down and grab him, and I will pick him up and begin throwing him. As his feet are on my hand, he will extend, you know, the jump, and my hand will brush across his tail as I sink into him and he becomes enormous. We he see says, me no, no. Uh, <laughs> let me let me drink. Let me drink. Without me. Without you. Go get him. <laughs> and you will see this cat leap up and lands on Ochara and it, it looks like he's grooming him. Like he's licking up the mana and blood that's leaking out of this god. And I uh, go, damn it, cat, that was my mana. <laughs> And he is. He is drinking up that power before you can get to it, Samlin. That cat is a jerk. You may reduce the hunger by one. I take it that was a hold, right? Yes. <laughs> Samlin, so hungry. These guys had nothing in them. And the cat just ate your dinner. I'm going to go over there and kick that pinata of him and get myself some more. <laughs> What do you want to do? Do you want to do you want to try and, and grab one of these uh, uh, diamond level salesmen? Yep, I think that's probably my be next best thing. Okay, um, then you go over the the one with the butterfly, a uh, cairn, the 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 elf. You grab onto him. Mm -hmm. um, when you feed, roll. Yeah. Okay go oh yeah so i got a 13 got a 13 so you will drop him but what what do we see did we see anything unusual i mean um no i, I think this is the thing is just because in this sense um the feeding is incredibly subtle I drain him of all of his energy, but it just looks like I've pulled him over and I'm giving him a talking to. And he'll collapse to the ground. Feistus, it looks like uh, Archara has, has uh, been moved as an obstacle to the stage. Uh, 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 do you want to try and lead the group out of here? Yeah, that's... Uh, um, so... so <sighs> try and... Try and yeah, man, I don't know. They're all kind of like tied up with something right now. Um, do you want to ask them if they want to leave? I mean, you could could, yeah. could try and leave that. Do you, yeah. So I'll 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 do that then. It's like we should exit this way, right? Or do we have other plans right now at the moment? There's still two mobs of uh, mooks with uh, wavy daggers. Um. What do you guys say? Yeah, Garzula, are you wanting to? I'm like, oh, uh, Rasputin, we should go. Once I've had my fill, I'm ready to go. Okay. And okay. Uh, Garzula will, um, after he uh, said that, he says, uh, yes, we should get out of here. Fine. Feistus, let's have you roll risk to lead your comrades out of here. Okay. Uh, risk. Uh, is that on the basic moves? Yep. yep. It is okay. the first move. Um, let's see, what emotion am I? Uh, um, I, I think power, because we kind of have control of the situation yeah. at the moment. You know, it's just well, kind power, of... Uh, yeah, um, I'll raise a check from fear for that. Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, you will get 
uh, get them out of there. Um, uh, but I do think that, uh, let me think here, um, that we will see as you're coming out, like your cloak slips, and you guys will see those feathers on Feistus. Um, and even as he's kind of running and pushing himself, you probably see the feathers spread a little bit up uh, uh, on him. Does that seem like a fair cost? Yeah. Yeah. Um, good. What, what, do, what do they look like now? They no longer look like pigeony feathers. What do they look like now? Um, they look like, um, like, like if you've seen like the, the seabirds when they get stuck in oil, so they're really greasy, really black and shiny and just like sticking out at odd angles all over the place. Nice. I just uh, looked at. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you, you guys will, will, uh, uh, get out of here, uh, out through the back ways um, and can can e exit out from the brass theater out into the kind of cold night air. Um, Samlin is probably wet with acolyte blood, um, but has it looks calmer. Um, and uh, Rasputin comes, you know, very happily trudging uh, behind you. I will have tried to grab one of the goodie bags that are there. I'm sure they have mints and cards in that pin. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you, you've gotten a, a hold of that. Um, though, though bags are for closers, but you took them, so. On an information pamphlet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll ask you guys if anyone knows what a organ egg is for. Because I've got one. Okay, what? Well, yeah. Where did you get a gorgon egg? Uh, my husband brought it back. You have a husband? <laughs> and that's a good place to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and we will that's what we're gonna take up next time. Let's do XP, shall we? Um yes. Sherry, um, yeah. Did you have to challenge or question your belief? Oh, man. I don't know. No, I didn't. That makes me sad. Okay. Come up with some other belief. But okay. Anyway, we'll check in at the beginning of next session. If you want to change those, we can do that. Um, did you face danger because of your trouble? Um, what's my trouble? Your trouble is uh, the... Uh, goofy uh, sorcerer's guy. So yeah, you got sent out of your house. Yes. Looking into that. So yeah, you get a point for that. Um, uh, did you create a new debt, call in a debt, or pay off a debt? We haven't formalized the discussion of debt ne debtness. I have helped a person with whom I have a debt. All right. Well, if you if you if you formalize that next time, okay, then, then uh, you can get an XP for that. All right. Um, did you learn something significant and new about the city? Yes. What did you learn? Uh, that they don't screen for people's unexpected husbands. No. Um, <laughs> I learned. I learned about the the whole area with the the gods, the little oh, gods. So fair enough. Fair enough. Um, uh, Garzula. Uh, uh, did you encounter a situation that forced you to challenge your or question your belief? I think so. This encounter with the uh, with the uh, with the fallen god uh, sort of you know has him reverting to the uh, the true name and the runes and the runes are all about uh, knowledge and uh -huh. he was able to use them again to uh, directly defend himself and his compatriots and so he's kind of had to question that belief a little bit now that that uh, you know, maybe he need, maybe knowledge is a little more important than he's given it credit for these last year this last year or so. Give you a point for that. Uh, you definitely get a point for your trouble because of, danger because of your trouble. Um, no debt thing, I don't think. Um, did you learn something new and significant about the city? Uh, yes. Uh, well, 
obviously there's the uh there's the you know the setup of the god spire which is uh really interesting i also learned that the city has ghost rail which i don't know what that is but it sounds amazing and i want to do it all right and uh, uh i did um i i did uh um let's see with my with my debt stuff uh -huh. i don't know that i specifically did anything but i did assist um or i did get assistance from someone who owed me a debt like do you think uh, did you clear me. did that clear a debt for you well i did sort of drag uh samlin and everybody else like into this apparent murder pit which i wasn't necessarily expecting to go quite that way <laughs> um so did you create I, a new debt call in a debt on somebody else or pay off a debt um i, I was thinking like somebody had paid off a debt to me like, okay uh, well who who is that then um, I think it was Samlin because she agreed to to come into this, uh, you know, uh, this this apparent yeah. murder pit with me. Then, from the kindness of my heart, yeah. So Samlin can can clear that debt, um, and you that means that you called in the debt. So each of you can mark XP for that. Okay. Feistus, uh, did you question uh, or challenge your belief? Um. I don't think so, so much this time. Okay. Yeah, just, uh, uh, you know, people who are too friendly get dragged down. Definitely these people are just way too social and they, they get caught up in this kind of crap. Right. Um, so, yeah. You definitely fought, faced danger because of your trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. Because those guys would have beaten you up. Um, uh, did you create a new debt, call in a debt, or pay off a debt? Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Garzula if they think I paid off uh, the curse hit at the wrong time and someone close to Garzula suffered because of it. Think this uh, paid back for that or not yet? I think so. Uh, okay. Basically, I'd, if anybody had a debt to me uh, helping me through this little murder pit, uh, Garzula will certainly consider that to be a fair... Sure. <laughs> a fair assignment, because this is pretty this okay. is pretty bad. So yeah, so uh you can clear that and you can mark an XP. Um and uh what do you think that Feistus learned about the city? Uh I think the most intriguing thing was about the the uh ghost rats. Um you know, and the, the ghost little that are uh, may actually be prayers. I thought that was really neat. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, what about, uh, you, Zelda, um, did you encounter a situation which forced you to challenge or question your belief? No, I still think it's better to be lucky than skilled. <laughs> um, you started out, you started putting yourself in danger to hunt down things because you need to get that. I, I see the chain. Do you, you need to... to it didn't seem like I put myself in much danger at that you point. Hit the, you hit the, you hit the streets. Okay. In, in deliberate right. reaction to to dealing with that pr trouble, so I, that counts for me. Um, did you uh, did you owe Garzula? Uh, did did uh, you owe Garzula? I do, but I was wondering, perhaps Garzula, do you think this is more of now you owe me a debt for coming out for this? Ooh. Oh, I could I could definitely see that Garzula will certainly be thankful to everybody. So yeah, like if that that may work, that uh, would certainly work. Cool. Then then mark a debt and mark an XP. Okay. And what did you learn significant or new about the city? I absolutely adored learning about orc food. <laughs> that was first rate fun. That was pretty cool. I like the old noodle thing that you came up with, Chris. Yeah. That was great. And I love you want the weak version. <laughs> of the two. I, I really want noodles now, though. That's the downside. I know. I have a really taste for noodles now. Food, food is one of my fallback sensory things, um, but the cost is that it makes people hungry when I when I go on my little spiels. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to take uh, a few minutes to do the the, the stars and wishes uh, to talk about what's going on. Um, particularly, uh, let's do a round of stars, um, and uh, then we'll do wishes, things you want to see things you would like to see more of things you th those kinds of things but let's do let's do the stars first and i'm going to do reverse order from what we just did we'll do Catan style um so uh uh tyler um i'm going to start with you with uh 
the uh, the wishes, the stars. Sorry, stars. I'll have to remember my stuff. I was trying to put my new things in. Already, oh, sorry. That's all right. Um, so starting with stars. Um, well, first off, like I said, I really loved uh, seeing the orc cuisine. I thought that was phenomenal. Um, I really enjoyed seeing Sherry how you dealt with the husband. That whole thing was really cute and interesting and you working around and what did they call you sweetie <laughs> <laughs> that was just a ton of fun um and uh i you know i out of everyone we got to see such cool things from your background i enjoyed both how john we got to see uh kind of you dealing with these folks and uh, there were such neat surprises but you, you dealing with these folks of you know, oh, the king sort of thing. And that was phenomenal. And, of course, huge star for getting us into terrible, terrible trouble, Chris. And, uh, well, as always, amazing, phenomenal characterizations. Uh, I, I appreciated seeing Mr. Peterson there at the beginning. That was fun. Uh, and, and star to kind of getting to see Rasputin out there going for things on his own. Thank you for that. That was cool. So star it's, there. It's one of those things she, Kay, my niece Kaylee played the attached and it was one of those things I often forgot. So I, I'm trying to remember to, to, to use that hold. Excellent. It was wonderful. Um, uh, Feistus, uh, sorry, um, John. <laughs> um, stars, um, stars. Okay. Uh, absolutely. The, uh, I have the egg. That means we can consummate. <laughs> that was <laughs> just great. Um, the 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 stuff with the noodles was really cool. Um, it was a good. And I I liked uh the. You know, Garza was like, I don't know what happened to this skull, but we're gonna go find out. And it's this horrible pyramid scheme. That was great. <laughs> um. Uh, I really liked uh, the the way Tyler describes interacting with Rasputin for like the changing the forms and everything. I really like that uh, from last session. We talked about merging with it and everything. Uh, so I'll I'll go with that for my stars. Okay, uh, Chris. Uh, first off, stars for you, Lil, for that amazing uh, pyramid cult thing. That was awesome. Uh, uh, let's see the. I love Samla's interaction with the with the surprise husband. That was great. That was just so, that was so much fun. Um, the and John, I love the idea of history busking. Uh, I was like, that made me think for a while, for just a minute, that like my master's in history might actually be worth something. <laughs> um, uh, Tyler, the the Rasputin thing. I love the idea of fastballing that cat at people. That was that's awesome. <laughs> and and that, the great thing about it is that would work in real life. Like that would be but, a terrifying weapon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, just it was it was it was all so much fun. I I loved all the all the weird all the uh, little bits of uh, little bits and pieces uh i loved uh the sort of characterization that uh, that samlin got when the hunger hits like just like you know hangry was the best way i could describe it that was, that was just so, that was so good sherry stars we were all pretty brilliant tonight so <laughs> um I actually liked when you stopped to do the uh, the when we came into the the God area, and everything that everyone said just really made it lovely and nice. So I think we all did an awesome job. So um, so those are my stars. You each get yours because I thought it all just worked together really well and made it a really colorful, awesome area. But I and I really liked going through the theater all the way back to the very back to where the thing was. That seemed right and appropriate. And I was primed to be hearing a pyramid scheme. <laughs> um, so let's flip back, starting with you, Sherry. Uh, wishes. 
Oh man. Um, how many more sessions do we have? We have three. Oh, good. So we have some time to really sink our teeth into a few more ideas. That's awesome. Um, I, I really liked getting to spend a little bit more time with Garzula's problems. I hope that in some ways that, that, that's what we do is we switch around through a set of personal issues for each of us just to help us define our, our characters. Um, and then I hope to eventually get our gold or two from Coxinius at the end. So. Um, I think one of the things I may do just to kind of help reinforce that is I'm going to change that XP question to say, did you get in trouble because did you go into danger because of someone's trouble? I think that's good. I think that's a better way to handle that. Um, it rewards, you know, going with the group or doing your own thing. I mean, it all, it, it, either way. So um, anything else? No. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to like doing a re-examination of the bleach. I always find that those are sort of tricky to do before you've played in some ways. And it's only when you're kind of in it that you can kind of come back to it and go, okay, these are the kinds of things we're doing. This is where my my character's beliefs are going to collide with the world and what we're doing. So, I think it's a really good point. It's certainly something we've seen before in this game, and I think it's very true here. Um, uh, back to you, uh, Chris. Anything you want to say wishes-wise? Uh, more. <laughs> More, I mean, I, I, I'm having, a, I'm having a great time with this character. I'm having a great time with the, with this, with this city. So, just more of this. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, what about for you, John? Uh, I think more is always the, the, the biggest one. Almost like every game I've played with Gauntlet, it's always is more. Um, uh, but for wishes, I'm gonna say for. I wish I had a little bit better grasp of. Feistus's kind of role with the group. Like, he's a fun character, but I still don't think I know, like, how he actually works, I guess. I don't know. Your so. curse is that you're the sensible one. Hmm? Your curse is that you're actually the sensible one in the group. Yeah, this is the, the straight person. Uh, but, um,. Yeah, and I, I absolutely uh, want to find out what happens next with Samlin's husband. That, that is okay. my greatest wish. <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. Yeah, and let's and let, let's let's next time we'll we'll, we'll look and 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 see. I think it's worth asking about what how the curse has changed you from where you were before and so on. Um, and thinking about that, one of the reasons I had no regret about doing that damage to you is because I knew you if you died you can come back. Um, so. Uh, uh, that's that's a, a fun fun move trigger too. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> um, Tyler, I'm going to give you last word. Um, uh, wishes, thoughts about this? Um, I have I have a couple of wishes. Um, sure, please. <clears throat> one is it, it's sort of a it's a me wish. I have to. I, I wish I could internalize better the fact that unlike most games, Veil. And, and this transfer over, your moves are not your character as much. It, it They are, you know, because like you play Dungeon World and your moves are what you're always going to. Mm -hmm. This is the moves are much more as, fl your playbooky moves are much more as flavor that adds to you doing other things. And I'm always reaching back there and trying to say, oh, well, what's my moves here on my sheet? I need to be paying attention to the moves, the basics and the extra moves, thinking of it that way. So I, that's a wish for me. I wish I would, you know, get myself out of that kind of static view of, oh, if I don't have a, a, a move that says I get to use two weapons, then I, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um so that that's a wish off. Um, another wish, and just as kind of an echo of what John's saying of, you know, his place in this, I'd love to see kind of what we are as a group. We've done a lot of, you know, we're playing, playing to learn, but like Samlin, we don't know each other very long. I mean, if you think about it, we're going into deadly turmoil together after knowing each other four months. 
Um, so I, I like to see, I, I'd love to see how us as a group dynamic, why we give a darn about each other a little above and beyond like the debts. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think that would be super cool. Um, so. And I should up. have done more. Uh, uh, I had opportunities to put Rasputin into those scenes and I didn't. And I should have done that. I should have, I should have had his voice in there a couple of times, like during the noodle shop and things. So that's something I've got to remember to do. So, um, to, to, and I think that may help frame where you're at. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all very much. I am going to go ahead and stop the broadcast.